I think the, the cost of electricity is something that we will not need to have uh, in Quebec, in Atlantic provinces, but throughout the country. I think uh, there's a lot of discussion at the moment regarding energy efficiency and using the electricity in a more sustainable way or just to optimize the use of electricity. And one of the elements regarding interconnection is really going in that direction. For example, the discussion about interconnection with New York and also Quebec means that in Winter Peak, for example, we can uh, use electricity from New York. And for example, when uh, it's the summer peak where New York is using more electricity, we can bring forward electricity to New York. So this interconnection is going to optimize the grid uh, in general. So uh, there's a discussion to have in terms of the electricity costs, but also in terms of energy efficiency. And one of that important element aspect to analyze in terms of energy efficiency is to make sure that uh, the interconnection in the NPCC, so it's Ontario, uh, Quebec, and also the Atlantic provinces with the, nor the Northeast of America, which is all related to a specific grid, are more interconnected to uh, make sure that we use the electricity generation in uh, a more optimized way uh, when the electricity need is needed for specific provinces or uh, a specific states. So that discussion is important, I think. And there's a lot of uh, improvement that we need to do in terms of using uh, the electricity generation in the future. And that's, uh, yeah, a global discussion that we will need to have in the future. Great, great question. And I think that's uh, the question that everybody in all the provinces and all the utility is asking uh, themselves. I want to make sure that if someone is just switching on the or uh, charging their vehicle, there will be electricity that it will be available at that specific time for that consumer. And there's an important discussion that uh, needs to happen during uh, the peak periods. And that's the moment where everybody wants to use electricity. So uh, it's a global discussion that needs to happen. But uh, battery storage is uh, interesting in that area because it can uh, take energy for a couple of hours and release it uh, when it's needed. So uh, there was a lot of informatic element that uh, are putting in place just to make sure that uh, uh, everything is put in place, but uh, that storage of electricity is important. And the advantage of the NPCC that include also the hydro dams of Quebec is that there's a storage reality with hydropower uh, that can help uh, increase the amount of wind and solar in uh, the grid at uh, in reality. So, uh, and it's the same thing also uh, for uh, New Brunswick with uh, the new nuclear perspective where they can have also a uh, specific um, uh, energy release at a specific time. So uh, I think it's important to have those specific technology that can help adding specific amount of energy at a specific time, but it's winter peak. So it's happening, for example, in January or February, because usually there's no problem at the moment in terms of having energy in March or uh, in May or in June in Canada, it's really more specific time of the year uh, that we need that electricity. So uh, it's uh, important to have that storage aspect as well uh, that is uh, uh, that is there. And this is why we are seeing more and more hybrid projects. Uh, so having, for example, battery storage and wind or battery storage with solar. So that can bring more and better stability to the grid uh, in general. Future also, there's a possibility for EV vehicle to uh, contribute to the stabilization of the grid eventually. So it's not going just one way, it can be uh, the two way in the future. So 
uh, yeah, there's a lot of technology that is uh, built also around that specific element. Ben c'est sûr qu'il y a une évolution en termes euh, d'énergie non renouvelable qui, euh, qui arrive euh, de plus en plus dans une situation où on va arriver vers la carboneutralité. Euh, cette situation-là va évoluer à travers le temps. Euh, donc, euh, c'est quelque chose qu'on doit regarder de façon importante, mais euh, de plus en plus, euh, on tend vers l'utilisation des éléments renouvelables, dont euh, par exemple le gaz naturel renouvelable, euh, entre autres, là, qui est de plus en plus utilisé, les bioénergies, euh, les biocarburants. Donc, il y a cet élément-là aussi qui est à prendre en considération. Je pense qu'il y a vraiment une évolution. Euh, mais si on veut aller vers la décarbonisation euh, actuellement là, du euh, réseau électrique, mais aussi de la consommation générale euh, des, euh, au niveau énergétique, euh, mais de plus en plus, il va y avoir cette décarbonisation-là dans le transport, il va y avoir cette décarbonisation-là aussi euh, dans le secteur industriel et des bâtiments qui vont arriver aussi par la suite là, dans une euh, perspective où il va y avoir un, une carboneutralité qui va être atteinte sur l'ensemble de l'économie. Donc, euh, il y a encore un rôle, mais ce rôle tend à évoluer euh, dans les prochaines années. that our potential is really important. Uh, and just as you have seen the, the map for the photovoltaic potential and also the wind potential. So I, I think we're really fortunate in Canada to have that amount of energy potential. And the advantage of those uh, sources that it can be implicated or implemented or installed in a lot of specific area where sometimes it's a remote area where uh, it's more difficult to have a transmission line, so there's the flexibility of those uh, of, of those energy uh, that can be built uh, in uh, various uh, uh, area in Canada. Uh, so it's it will evolve uh, really quickly, but uh, yeah, a lot of potential, and we're really fortunate to be uh, among the leaders. Uh, for example, on the wind perspective, we're in the top 10 of uh, generation of megawatts uh, in uh, throughout the world. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see how we're going to be in uh, five or 10 years from now. But uh, yeah, we're among the leaders in those uh, renewable uh, projects or uh, in the global mix. There's a lot of potential, for example, in Saskatchewan, uh, for example, in the photovoltaic uh, map, Saskatchewan have a lot of potential to uh, build additional solar uh, facilities and eventually also wind. So I think it's an important discussion that needs to happen in every province and territories across Canada. That kind of discussion, for example, happened in Nova Scotia, where their energy mix relied uh, a couple of years ago on 80% of coal and now is shifting to 80% of renewable. I think it's important also to have a thoughtful uh, a discussion about the workforce uh, where, for example, that announcement of the phase out of coal will lead also to a discussion regarding workforce and making sure that uh, they want to participate in renewable project in the future that uh, they will have uh, the specific training to shift to a renewable project if uh, that's what they want to do. So I think it's important to have discussion, this discussion province by province, but there's also tangible target that uh, province or uh, the federal government is establishing. So uh, it needs to come also with uh, various discussion in the province about how to meet those uh, federal targets also. It's, uh, it's uh, I think, one of the major challenge at the moment in the economy, uh, making sure that we have the workforce to build that economic growth or making sure that uh, we have uh, the workforce for a specific sector, and it's including all the in, uh, all the sector uh, from the healthcare, from childcare, and also the energy sector. 
but I think there's a specific discussion that needs to happen in terms of the energy sector related to that shift of the energy mix and the importance of making sure that uh, we are uh, helping the workers once uh, to uh, participate more in the renewable industry to make sure that uh, they will be able to uh, to be uh, to be part of that uh, incremental amount of megawatts that needs to be built. On a, avec les choix historiques du passé, le choix hydroélectrique aussi que le Québec a fait avec Hydro-Québec, une, une génération électrique ou un réseau électrique qui est décarboné. Je pense que le défi du Québec, ça va être de s'assurer, puis de plan stratégique d'Hydro-Québec 2022-2026 ciblait ça aussi, c'est s'assurer qu'on on mettre en place tous les jalons importants pour s'assurer de créer davantage d'électricité ou d'utiliser optimalement l'électricité pour que euh, ces mégawatts-là aussi puissent être mis à profit là, dans euh, les autres secteurs là, qui euh, ne sont pas actuellement là, dans, qui n'utilisent pas euh, le réseau électrique actuel. Donc, par exemple, je pense à des autobus électriques, hein, entre autres, là, par exemple, qui pourraient bénéficier d'avoir davantage là, de génération électrique ou d'utilisation de, de, de l'électricité. Euh, C'est sûr et certain qu'à euh, ce niveau-là, je pense que le Québec doit, comme toutes les autres provinces, avoir une vision maintenant vers la carboneutralité parce qu'eux ont déjà atteint la première étape de décarboner leur réseau électrique. Mais euh, dans le futur, euh, ils vont avoir aussi euh, le même défi que euh, l'ensemble des autres provinces et territoires, c'est-à-dire s'assurer de mettre à profit cette électricité-là qui va être décarbonée pour euh, les autres secteurs importants, que ce soit industriel, euh, le secteur de l'agriculture ou euh, le secteur des transports, pour s'assurer que ben on puisse aller vers un, un horizon qui est euh, carboneutre. Merci. Uh, those uh, companies, they are, uh, some of them that are implicated also in the renewable industry. So we have seen in the, in the past that uh, those uh, industry also want to create sometimes additional uh, renewable projects. So I cannot speak with a global perspective on the energy, but I can say, for example, that uh, there are some of those companies who are interested in developing additional renewable projects uh, throughout Canada. So uh, it's interesting to um, see how it's going to evolve, uh, how they want to collaborate in the future for uh, additional uh, renewable projects. Uh, so I don't have the complete landscape about uh, this question, but uh, I have seen uh, the interest of uh, some companies in making sure that uh, they can also be part of the discussion regarding renewable projects. Uh, but uh, it's sure that uh, the energy mix is evolving. And I think that uh, all those companies are also aware of that energy transition perspective and uh, that they also uh, could uh, diversify their own portfolio. Uh, so I think that uh, in that perspective, um, we are uh, all, a lot of energy uh, coming from renewable project will needs to be built. It's going to be a global discussion with uh, utility, with uh, citizen and also from the industrial aspect. And I think that everyone can contribute in a perspective of building additional capacity coming from renewable projects. And I'm sure a couple of them are uh, doing that. I was meeting with a specific company recently that wanted to also diversify their portfolio and their interest in that perspective. So I think it's important to have this discussion uh, just to make sure that everybody will also collaborate in uh, additional possibility for uh, building more megawatts in the future coming from renewable projects. It's a great discussion. Uh, the projection in terms of renewable uh, jobs uh, potential is increasing a lot with uh, that uh, net zero discussion. So I think that 
there was networking events sometimes. I have seen a lot of people uh, from university in networking events, such as uh, the one that we are hosting at Canaria. Uh, there's also sometimes a more uh, global uh, meeting uh, with uh, our Congress that implicate also the renewable industry. And sometimes there was special uh, uh, fees for a student as well. So I think that if you are interested in participating in those kind of discussion, learning more about uh, the various possibility in that sector, I really encourage you to, uh, to do it. Uh, there is a lot of local association uh, as well. There is our association that is more a national association, but there's also a specific association or specific uh, regional activity that is happening. Uh, so I really encourage you to participate. Uh, as I say, sometimes there is a special fee for student and uh, there is a, a lot of need in terms of workforce in the future. And if, for example, uh, sometimes there is even open house that is uh, conducted by an uh, organization regarding a visit on a wind farm or a visit of a solar facilities or a battery storage facilities. And I'm sure it's the same thing for small hydro as well and other renewable sources. So I really encourage you also to uh, to look at uh, the various possibility if you are interested. But uh, I'm pretty sure it's going to be an interesting uh, sector to develop a career if you're interested in uh, being involved in the solar or the wind industry in the future. Uh, there's uh, a lot of uh, projects uh, that are developed in partnership with uh, indigenous people. It's really important to have this discussion with local communities, indigenous people, with also municipalities. Uh, so for example, there's a lot of new project that has been announced recently in Nova Scotia that include a Mi'kmaq partnership. There's also uh, the APRIT project in Quebec uh, that has been developed uh, with uh, indigenous people. So I think it's uh, now part of uh, the discussion around how to uh, make sure that the project that is established in Canada is also uh, bringing a social acceptability aspect, but also making sure that uh, we have uh, a global discussion about upcoming possibilities uh, for communities or for indigenous people. So. I think it's uh, something that uh, will be in place for the future. And I'm really glad to be at that time where that discussion is uh, evolving really rapidly and quickly in terms of building more uh, partnership with uh, local communities and also uh, with indigenous people, because it's going to be a project that will be there for 20, 25 years, 30 years. And we just want to make sure that it's part of the landscape and that everyone is happy to uh, uh, collaborate uh, in the various uh, phases of that project. It can be the construction phases, it can be on the operation and maintenance uh, phases of that project, and even in the decommissioning phases for some project uh, that is that will need decommissioning uh, in the future. So. I think it's important to have this, this discussion and uh, we are really involved uh, in the Atlantic and Quebec around uh, the importance of that partnership and I'm sure it's something that is uh, evolving throughout Canada as well. Improvement in renewable in uh, the western part and now uh, a lot of uh, additional megawatt is now built in the east as well so yeah it's a it's a global uh, discussion a global mix that is evolving and um, Really glad uh, to have been here today and uh, being able to speak about uh, what is happening in the eastern part of Canada at the moment. Well, we really appreciate it and uh, it's pretty exciting to watch. Thank you so much for bringing um, your expertise and for all of your time today. Thank you very much uh, for, uh, for you for having me today. Awesome. And uh, yeah, thank you to all of our viewers and we will catch you next week.